Kelly and Kendall Jenner are up against some serious claims right now after a factory has exposed them for refusing to pay the factory workers who make the clothes for their clothing line collection. Just when she had announced on June 20th that she would finally be launching her new fashion collection with her sister Kendall, the networks bombarded her with the accusations of alleged labor exploitation. According to the reports, the sisters had refused to pay workers from Bangladesh who are in charge of the manufacturing of the garments of their collection. This video is in no way a defense of Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, or the Kendall and Kylie brand. The intention of this video is to simply advocate for the truth and for the Bangladesh workers and the truth of what's really happening and what clothing brands are actually causing this issue. Thanks, enjoy. Hi guys, it's Madison back in the blue chair for another crazy video. Welcome to my little corner on the internet where we discuss scams and unethical business practices going on. Today we are talking about the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand and how they may have refused to pay Bangladesh workers. Is that the full story? Watch this video to find out. That was cheesy. But before we get into the video, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze scams and unethical business practices going on on the internet, don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. And Walt, let's get into it. Before we get into the video, first off, I wanted to thank you guys so much for 50k subscribers. I usually never talk about numbers. I don't think it's super important, but this is definitely a huge milestone and I'm so thankful to everyone. Ever since I started my channel, a lot of people have asked me about merch, when I'm coming out with merch, what it's going to be, all of that. So I have finally launched a merch line with Teespring. So this is the merch that I have. It's currently up and I will have a link down below so you can check it out. There is absolutely no need to purchase any of this. If you like the designs or you want to support my channel and what I'm doing here, this is an opportunity for you to do so. I designed all of the images on the merch myself and wanted something that was unisex and that had kind of inside jokes that OG subs or people who've seen a lot of my videos would get, but I didn't want them to look like a walking ad for my channel. I wanted them to be kind of a little bit more inconspicuous so you can wear them around and feel comfortable and confident. So check it out if you guys are interested. And of course, as always, I appreciate any feedback. Fast fashion and the Kardashians are two things that most people really do not like. So when these two entities came together and it came out that the Kendall and Kylie clothing line was refusing to pay Bangladesh garment workers, most people were understandably outraged. So let's dive into this whole situation and examine what's really going on. On June 1st, an article was published on the site Remake, which reported that the company Global Brands Group, or GBG, had refused to pay its garment workers in Bangladesh for orders manufactured in February and March due to the pandemic. Gotta love when a huge company acts like it's just struggling too much and just can't afford to pay its own workers who are probably, you know, somewhat equally affected by the pandemic because it's kind of like a worldwide thing. So GBG, not Kendall and Kylie, is the company that is refusing to pay garment workers in Bangladesh. Let's just get that out of the way first. To learn more about GBG and who they are, let's examine their own about page on their website, where they say, we are the go-to company for the world's best brands. Though don't go to us if you're an employee or factory worker who expects to get paid. Global Brands Group Holding Limited, GBG, is one of the world's leading branded fashion accessories, footwear, and apparel companies and we will continue to walk away from all of our problems while wearing our stylish accessories and footwear. It goes on to say, we design, develop, market, and sell products under a diverse array 
of owned and licensed brands, such as Calvin Klein, Juicy Couture, All Saints, Jones New York, and many more. Those are all very expensive brands, but you're telling me that GBG couldn't afford to pay Bangladesh workers for two months work because business was slower? As you can tell, GBG has a lot of brands underneath it, but the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand was not listed. Yet, the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand is the one receiving pretty much all of the backlash for this situation. Why is that? Well, initially, GBG listed the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand on its portfolio of affiliated brands, though since then, the listing has been removed. But initially, it seems like most of this started when Remake launched the story that basically put Kendall and Kylie Jenner at the forefront of this entire controversy and unethical business practice of not paying workers and kind of made it seem through the discussion and headline and photos as if they were at fault for the Bangladesh workers not being paid because they were listed as an affiliated brand for GBG. So people saw the Kendall and Kylie brand listed on BGB, saw that BGB didn't pay garment workers. The story transformed into Kylie Jenner is refusing to pay Bangladesh workers. I even personally saw a TikTok saying that Kylie Jenner was refusing to pay Bangladesh workers and didn't think twice about it and was just like, yeah, that makes sense. Why is no one talking? about what's happening with Kylie Jenner. Over 1,000 garment factories in Bangladesh have reported over $3 billion worth of orders canceled from multiple brands, including Kylie Jenner's own clothing brand because of COVID-19. Kylie Jenner, along with some other big brands, have refused to pay for the shipment even though the clothes were already made. This has led to over 1 million garment workers becoming unemployed as the garment factory is not able to pay them for the work they did. Her own fans have been commenting on her social media, demanding her to pay back the workers what she owes them. You need to be locked in prison for a very long time. You need the internet taken away from you. You are a danger to society. Reality is, even if the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand was affiliated with GBG, they would still have no authority over GBG and their business decisions. They're not the owner of the company, a board member, a CEO, an executive, or anything like that that has any sort of decision power over GBG and whether or not it pays its workers. So as much as I think that outrage over this entire situation is completely justified, I kind of feel like the outrage is a little bit misplaced and GBG is kind of getting away with not paying their garment workers as all the focus is being shifted onto Kendall and Kylie Jenner. AKA GBG is able to not take any accountability, even though they are the ones that are 100% at fault for this. So the next few minutes of this video are kind of a complete fail for whatever reason. I honestly have no idea. My camera decided to not focus on anything at all. So my face is completely blurry. The entire image is just a blurry mess. I've been failing so much on the filming tech front lately. I really don't don't know why. I have to get my act together on that. Sorry if that bothers you, but for this part, I'm going to mainly show images and videos of what I'm talking about so you don't have to see my blurry face, though I'm sure we're all sick of seeing my face anyways, so this might work out perfectly. Public pressure is only effective when it's applied in the right way. And if you're not applying public pressure on the right person, the right company, or the right entity, no change will really happen. The Bangladesh workers will still be unpaid if GBG isn't being held accountable for not paying them. If everyone's focusing on Kylie Jenner, not GBG, GBG's never going to have any reason to take accountability because on top of the Kendall and Kylie brand really having no control over GBG, 
Apparently, according to the company itself, they are not even affiliated with GBG. The Kendall and Kylie brand issued a statement via Instagram about the entire Bangladesh situation that read, we would like to address the unfortunate and incorrect rumor that Global Brands Group owns the Kendall and Kylie brand and that we have neglected to pay factory workers as a result of the pandemic. This is untrue. The Kendall and Kylie brand is owned by 3072541 Canada Incorporated, not GBG. The brand has worked with CAA GBG, which according to GBG and on their company website, CAA GBG is a joint venture with Creative Artists Agency and it's the world's largest brand management company. So though the Kendall and Kylie brand has worked with CAA GBG in the past in a sales and business development capacity only, they don't currently have a relationship at all with GBG. So it doesn't seem like the Kendall and Kylie brand was working with GBG on manufacturing at all to even begin with, even in the past. And now at this point, they aren't associated with GBG in any capacity. But there was so much backlash because this entire story was framed to be Kylie Jenner refusing to pay Bangladesh workers. So because of that, there was even more misinformation that Kylie Cosmetics was somehow not paying Bangladesh workers. So even Kylie Cosmetics had to respond to comments in their own Instagram, which is of course where all official business is done nowadays, where they said, there is a rumor that some people are perpetuating online, which is unfortunate. The Kendall and Kylie clothing brand does not manufacture anything in Bangladesh, and Kendall and Kylie is not currently associated with GBG. We feel terrible that this problem exists, but this rumor regarding Kendall and Kylie is completely untrue. Now, of course, for clarification, this is not to say that the Kendall and Kylie clothing brand don't have their own manufacturing issues. We don't fully know the extent of Kendall and Kylie manufacturing, and of course, 100% there could be issues with that, because the sad reality is this entire situation has brought forth a really persistent problem with today's fashion industry and fast fashion, which is that garments and fashion items are being manufactured from so many places all around the world. And it's nearly impossible to know the fullest extent of how the clothing is being made and how the workers are being treated. And that has created a dangerous climate for fashion brands that are out competing each other to produce more and more at a cheaper and cheaper cost as well as just created a dangerous climate for the climate. Fast fashion is one of the most damaging things to the climate. It's so, so bad. So the whole point of this video is not to say that the Kardashian and Jenners don't have their own problematic business dealings because they 100% have, and I've made an entire video about it. The main point of this video is actually more about the Bangladesh workers themselves and when backlash in an effort to support those who are hurting can actually be counterproductive because the reality is this is kind of an example of fake news as much as I hate that phrase coming out of my mouth where misinformation was being widely spread on the internet. I can't help but feel like it took attention away from the Bangladesh workers who need help and assistance right now and didn't apply public pressure to the right people. Instead, Kendall and Kylie were able to deflect the backlash and criticism saying it's untrue. Obviously, Kylie Jenner is not going to be paying for the Bangladesh workers, unfortunately. That's the situation. And the people who were responsible for all of this happening are able to take no accountability and not be held responsible for this situation at all. All because a over sensationalized story was being pushed out to the public. Remake, who published the original article regarding the situation, has come out with 
a lot of updates on the situation. And I'm going to read them aloud to you guys. Now, the article on Remake has a photo of a Bangladesh garment worker and then also a photo of Kendall and Kylie Jenner. And the title reads, Kylie, Kendall, and Cardi B's unpaid bills have left garment makers starving. I feel conflicted kind of critically speaking about this article, but I can't help but feel like that's an extremely sensationalized title and photo that is such a far stretch since GBG once again is the main company responsible for this. So for most of this video, I've been talking a lot about all the misinformation being spread regarding the workers in Bangladesh. And I think it's important that I also mention more of the proven information about companies or labels who aren't paying workers and what's really going on in Bangladesh right now. First off, I wanna say, I know I've been really critical of Remake in this video and how they've doubled down on what is, in my opinion, false information designed to sensationalize a story because celebrities are at the focus instead of the actual brands who are at fault. But I do want to be fair and note that Remake came out with what is, in my opinion, a much better article that explains how celebrities' relationships with unethical clothing brands impacts that brand's success and the spread of bad practices, which is a completely valid and important aspect to the conversation that I think should be focused on more. Remake also labels themselves as a nonprofit, so while in the article they claim to be doing investigative journalism into this story, their main focus is on the nonprofit activism in the fast fashion space. So while their article spreads false information, their hashtag pay up campaign is definitely something to give them credit for and that they are really creating a positive impact with. If you go onto their own website and view their hashtag pay up campaign, you can see that Remake is urging a ton of brands to pay for their workers, no matter where their workers are located. Though I will note that on the hashtag pay up page, Remake doesn't have the Kendall and Kylie brand listed, nor does it have GBG listed, which are the two main focuses or companies of their Bangladesh article. Though I will say the attention of the hashtag pay up campaign did apply public pressure to a lot of large brands and labels who seem to be promising to pay their workers, which is an incredible accomplishment on Remake's part. So regarding the Bangladesh situation, what is actually happening in Bangladesh at the moment? According to NPR, Bangladesh's garment industry is the second largest in the world behind China's. It accounts for about 84% of Bangladesh's export revenue and is so critical to the economy that sewing machine operators were declared essential workers exempt from a lockdown. But many factory owners decided to shut down production anyway amid declining global orders and fear of infection. In April, one million garment workers were fired or furloughed, which is about a quarter of the industry's Bangladeshi workforce. Since then, most of Bangladesh's garment factories have reopened with support from an $8 billion government stimulus package. And in late May, the International Monetary Fund approved $732 million in emergency aid. The European Union has also pledged $126 million. So it seems like Bangladesh garment factories were able to reopen, but not through company and label support, but rather government support. Even though factories have opened up in Bangladesh, big fashion brands are still to this day canceling orders. As a result of this, Bangladeshi garment workers continue to struggle. Those who go back to work find cramped factory conditions that are not good to have during a pandemic. And on top of that, many face pay cuts, which a lot of workers and union representatives warn will lead to poverty and hunger. Four out of five garment workers are women who in many cases support several relatives and live from paycheck to paycheck. And Bangladesh has no unemployment benefits. Bangladeshi law requires employers to pay severance, but many don't. On top of that, global brands are obsessed with their own economic pain and are canceling orders in Bangladesh where they typically don't have to pay until they take the finished goods. The president of the Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association said orders have dropped by half and aren't expected to bounce back for another year. 
So with cancelled orders and on top of that no social distancing in Bangladesh factories, Bangladesh garment workers are still facing a ton of dangers. It's still a very rocky situation with so many clothing companies manufacturing over there. And in my opinion, the real facts of that story is what we need to be sharing, not misinformation. If you even look at Remake's own article for Global Brands Group, they circle the Kendall and Kylie brand but there's, but the portfolio that GBG claims to have also features brands like Lego, Minecraft, Fortnite, Marvel, Disney, The Simpsons, Star Wars, Netflix, Barbie, MTV. So why are these other brands not featured? It's like Kendall and Kylie are just one out of the many, many companies, large companies affiliated with GBG, the main company responsible for this, but you turn it into a headline featuring Kendall and Kylie and you put their photo everywhere, making it the main subject. So they kept the original unedited story in where it talks about the Kardashian-Jenner's net worth, it talks about their Instagram following. It makes the entire story centered around them, not the garment workers. You can definitely check out and read it if you want to, but I mean, we get the gist of it. At the bottom, Remake even has a call to action, a very bold one where it says, ask Kylie, Kendall, P. Diddy, and Cardi B to pay their makers by using the hashtag payup and sign the pay up petition, making it into a movement. Let's be real, if Remake made an article solely about GBG, a company that works with a ton of famous brands, but that no one really knows in itself, would people be as interested in the article? Whereas if you use celebrity names, that's a little bit more sensationalistic. Do I think that these celebrities should chip in to help pay for Bangladesh workers? Yeah, I think that would be great. But are they going to? And if this same widespread pay up hashtag was actually applied to GBG, would they have actually made changes and paid their workers? Their first update was on 6-24-2020, where they first started out with, Remake has been petitioning Global Brands Group in parentheses, who listed Kendall Kylie as an affiliate label on their website until yesterday for refusing to pay garment workers for canceled orders produced in February and March. So they go on to say, yesterday we received word from a Kendall and Kylie representative that the label does not have current orders with Global Brands Group. No, they, they claim they never even worked with Global Brands Group with facilitating orders from what I comprehend. So that's an interesting way of wording it. And we'll pursue legal action if we didn't remove our posts and apologize. To this, we must ask, do Kendall and Kylie know who their suppliers are? And can they confirm that the women who sue their clothing online have been paid during the coronavirus crisis? So instead of refocusing on the people who are actually responsible for not paying Bangladesh workers, something that has actually been proven and that you can actually focus on. Instead, you're choosing to further hyper-focus on what Kendall and Kylie are doing and their manufacturing practices. I'm totally curious to know what Kendall and Kylie's manufacturing practices are, whether they're ethical or not, all of that but that was not the original conversation. Bangladesh workers need help. Why is this all of a sudden a focus of the article? 7-3-2020 update. We make would like to make the following correction to the verbiage used in the below article. The Kendall and Kylie label has never been owned by Global Brands Group. Rather, Kendall and Kylie has been an affiliated label of GBG, as was documented on their website until 6-23-2020. 7-6-2020 update. In the Instagram post, the Kendall and Kylie label notes that they do not currently have a relationship with Global Brands Group. However, the real question that needs to be answered by the Kendall and Kylie label is as follows. Who has historically produced their orders and has the label engaged these factories to assure that wage payment has taken place? Wage payment in the past? I thought we were talking about 
due to the pandemic, Bangladesh workers not being paid. You can't just assume that a brand isn't paying workers. The entirety of this story was all centered around Kylie Jenner not paying Bangladesh workers. It just feels like Remake doubling down on this whole angle of this story is just spreading misinformation and detracting from all the good that they're supposedly trying to do. Like if you're trying to do all of this good, why are you so focused on this story angle that you just have no information on when there's so much information on horrible working conditions for garment workers? They're shifting focus away from the real problems and it feels like they're basically saying, okay, so you aren't involved in GBG and the Bangladesh workers not being paid. Well then who are you not paying? You must not be paying someone. Give us a story that we don't have because we may made a lot of claims and we'll look like idiots if we don't back it up. The main story that they're trying to raise awareness on is Bangladesh workers not being paid, which there's evidence for, and which GBG is responsible for. As stated in Remix article and in all of the updates, there is a real huge issue with garment workers being affected by the pandemic and facing food and housing insecurities. And that should be the main focus how it's happening, what brands we have proof are directly causing this, and what we can all do to help. So in the description of this video and pinned in the comments, I will be providing links to petitions and charities that will help garment workers during the pandemic and during this time and are trying to raise awareness about fast fashion and all the problems regarding fast fashion. Unfortunately, a lot of this is a good example about how sensationalistic stories can distract from the real issues and spread misinformation. Just because the story kind of sounds like it would be true or this person is an easy public figure to focus focus all of the outrage and public backlash on instead of this larger and much more complex brand. But hey, maybe this is an opportunity for us all to do some good in this situation and to actually focus on fast fashion and the real issues regarding fast fashion. Check out some links and resources down below.